up friends welcome back to the channel what are y'all doing what you doing friend are you busy oh friends i had to find out something while i was minding my business being nosy and i know y'all want to know about it because y'all like me we want to know what's going on out there so let's talk about it now, first and foremost, let me just put this out here. Everything I'm getting ready to say to y'all is purely speculation and information that I found on the internet. Some of it is my opinion, but it's speculation and information, okay? Forming my own opinion based on the facts that have been presented to me, all right? So don't sue me. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, friends, so we got it out of the way. These is, these, these is what I just saw and what I think about it. These is my opinions, all right? I'm going to put a little disclaimer down in the box below because I feel like it get a little shaky waters when you start talking about stuff like this. Get a little shaky waters. But I get it. Anyway, we're going to talk about these astronauts that's been spinning and floating, spinning and floating, spinning and floating for the past three months. Okay? Three months. Three months in, in low Earth orbit. I was about to say out of space. But let me just define because I have to explain this to y'all. A lot of y'all know me from TikTok. And if you do, hey, boo, hey, hey, friend, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you, you, I'm glad you're here. But y'all know how I feel about outer space, and I don't think anybody has been outside of the Earth's atmosphere. I don't think it's possible, okay? I don't think it's possible. Low Earth orbit within the atmosphere, perfectly possible. I do think that's possible. The ISS is in low Earth orbit, so these astronauts have been floating around the Earth 16 times per day, Going 17,000 miles an hour in low Earth orbit. That's what they tell me. Sound, it sounds like science fiction, don't it? It sounds like some sci-fi type thing. And I really want to talk about the problem and the issue with this. Because to me, it don't make no sense. This is a failure of processes, checks, and balances within the company and organization. Everybody. Everybody say it with me. Checks and balances. Processes. Okay? within the organization, within the house of NASA. And I say the house of NASA because it ain't no way. It ain't no way that these folks should have been allowed to go on this mission, on this star line of Boeing, okay? Shouldn't have been away, not on this green earth. Maybe on earth two, three, four, five, within the flash on the CW, but not on this earth, okay? And I'm gonna tell you why. But first friends, <laughs> I almost forgot to shout out my good friends that commented on my last video. I appreciate y'all and I love y'all so much because without y'all, we ain't here, Gram Squad. So these are my favorite people from the Gram Squad. Every time y'all comment, y'all just automatically become my favorites. BFFs, y'all my favorite. Everybody give them a shout out. Give them a round of applause. I love y'all. Mm -hmm. All right, so the two astronauts that are floating around in space right now are Sunny and Butch, okay? I don't need to put their whole government out there because they ain't no nobody business. If you want to go out there and look, go look. Sonny and Butch are both astronauts. They ain't new astronauts. They ain't just joined the program. They've been doing this for a little while. Okay, both of them have military background, engineer experience. Um, they are pilots, helicopter pilots, F-18 pilots. They've been flying and doing stuff like this for a while. This ain't new to them, okay? New to y'all, not to them. Sonny, that's my girl. She's the Virgo. September 19th is her birthday. I know sis is up there losing it. We're going to pray for her. We're going to keep on our prayers. But me? Me? A Virgo friend? I'm a Virgo. In case y'all didn't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure y'all can see that all over my face. I know y'all can hear it in my tone and my cadence. I'm a Virgo. But the first thing when it came to my mind, friends, is I knew I shouldn't have got up here. I knew that I should not have got on this here doohickey, this vehicular device. I shouldn't have been, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. And I would be kicking myself every single day, which to them is not like us because they in a constant state of perpetual light or perpetual darkness. I don't know because, it's, you know, it's different up there what they say about the sun do. But as a Virgo and overthinking, okay, overanalyzing. Let me, let me rephrase that, overanalyzing, not overthinking, overanalyzing. I would have overanalyzed every possible way I could have not been on that particular rocket ship or within the ISS. I would have thought about everything that went wrong, who dropped the ball, why this person don't need to be saying nothing to me when I get back. 
I would have been overanalyzing everything, every little intricate part, every noise, every sound, every possibility of what could possibly happen to go wrong. I'd have been thinking about all of that. Now I would have had 15 different solutions on how we should get home. I would have been holding meetings every day. I would have been out of my mind as a Virgo. But nobody would know though. Only the person that's with me would know. Everybody else, I'd be like, hey y'all, everything's okay. Everything's good. How, y'all, how you doing, boo? I'm good. I'm happy. I like it here. But when that camera shut off, the tears. Oh, how Lenny say? He did, I would cry to ain't no more tears. I would be crying to ain't no more tears. My eyes would have been, I would have been like Mrs. Puff. My eyes would have been like a blowfish, okay? Was it a blowfish or a puffish or a puffer? I don't know. Anyway, we're going to get back to that. Sunny is a Virgo. I know she's analyzing everything at this point. And Butch, on the other hand, because Sunny is the girl, Butch is the guy. He's a Capricorn. Now, whoo, 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 right away, I said, this is, this is, this is just a disaster. The Capricorn is the overthinker. The Capricorn is the overtalker. I love y'all Capricorns, but y'all do overthink and do kind of sort of overtalk. And the overanalyzer and the overthinker, overtalker, and a, and a Virgo that know it all. And the Capricorn that know it all. Who Jesus. Help us, Lord. I know they is up there like, say one more thing right now. Say something else. And I promise you, you ain't going to make it back. That's how I feel. That's what I think going on. Because I know some people are not into astrology and those types of things. But I have those placements for me. Because I'm not deep into it. But I'm going to tell you, it do explain a lot about me that I don't make excuses for. I just want to know why I had these certain, you know, personality traits. And sure enough, when I looked it up, I said, hot dog on my Virgo and Capricorn right there in the in the top. Overthinking, overanalyzing. That's me all day. Call me overthinking, overanalyzing mode. Because that's what I do every day, all day. Even when I'm asleep, I wake up like, ooh, I forgot to think about something. So I'm just thinking about their mental health, to be honest, friends. And we're going to keep them in our prayers, keep them prayed up, since they already up there close to Jesus. <laughs> I'm sure the blessing is going to rain on them first before it rain on us. <laughs> I'm not even trying to be funny, friends. I am, but this is just trying to make light of the situation. I feel like they're going to be fine. But let's talk about the mission. Now, the mission actually started in June. They were supposed to go on an eight-day mission to do some little tests and a little tinker tinkering around. Um, but what ended up being eight days has turned into three months. Now, before we get into what's about to happen next, I'm going to give y'all an update on that. Let's talk about what happened prior to them leaving. Because this right here is where somebody need to be popped across the mouth. Whoever in charge. Right across the mouth. Because it ain't no way these folks should have been allowed to leave. Bowen. Y'all literally is counting the days. <laughs> counting the days. Now, I'm not communicating no threats. I'm just saying. They done lost about $1.2, $1.6 billion on this outer space stuff. This astronaut, Starliner, Boeing. They have lost money. Not to mention they have had two planes go down. In like two years. Rest in peace to the people who lost their lives. Okay. Two planes to go down. This Starliner mission was supposed to start a long time ago. They were years behind schedule. Not a few days. Not a few weeks. Anybody who deal with project management or things like that, you know. You got to get them deliverables on time. Because when you don't, the company loses money. Okay. They're years behind and hundreds of millions of dollars over budget. Now, listen to me, friends. If I tell you I'm about to pick you up for prom, the gala, the BET awards, the rip the runway, whatever, and I'm going to need X amount of dollars. So you send me money, send me money, send me money, send me money. And I come back to you with a she in dress body con that, you know, probably only costs about $20. Okay. And then I pull up to you with a car, this Model T Ford that you got to get in front of and turn crank up like this. That kind of probably worth some money. But you get the gist of what I'm saying to you, right? I done, I done got something from the buy here, pay here. Ain't nothing wrong with buy here, pay here. But I'm talking about like a 1989 Honda Accord with 300,000 miles up there. It's probably going to run like brand new. Cause Honda's Accord, Honda Accords are good. Boeing might need to talk to them. Cause Honda, I'll get on I'll get on the spaceship if it was made by Honda. Cause Honda know what to do. Anyway, 
But I pull up to you with a product that's less than what the money you've been giving me for. I would expect five across the lip if it was me. But hey, the Boeing, they top notch, right? They make all the airlines, 757, 657, I don't know. They do all the stuff they're supposed to do. So they hundreds of million, hundreds of millions of dollars over budget, allegedly. Years behind, allegedly. And then in December of 2019, they had an unmanned test mission, right? In low Earth orbit. A misfiring happened. Didn't even make it to the ISS. And while it was up there, there was a software issue that caused the clock to be 11 hours off. Baby, we got to know what time it is. Because I need to know what time I need to hit the little turn to get back in the Earth the right way so I don't burn up. You get what I'm saying? And they were not certified to even man a crew in low Earth orbit at that time. So... The Starliner got seated for two years. That was in 2019. So 2022, they do another unmanned test flight. They get back in low Earth orbit and guess what? Software issues. Not only were there software issues, friends, there was an issue with the parachute. Now, that's it for me. I'm not who. Who about to get on this um here rocket ship, shuttle, whatever you want to call it. And the parachute ain't opening right. That's the point. How am I get home? If the parachute don't open right, y'all know they got to cut it. What they said they had to cut it so it don't. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. They got to cut it so it don't, you know, burn up. And then when the, before they hit the ocean, because, you know, hitting the water is like slamming into a brick wall. I'm going to need a parachute to deploy. But if there's issue, I don't care if they say the issue is the parachute will pink instead of white. Fix it. I'm not, I only want to get up here now. Because at this point, I feel like this is like the Tower of Babel. Y'all keep trying to get off the planet. And you all know like the Tower of Babel in the Bible where God had to knock it down and make everybody speak different languages because they were going to try to reach heaven. You keep trying to go up there. Now he didn't... Issues, software issues, delays, over budget, behind schedule. If that ain't the Lord, I don't know who he is. Jesus Jaquan Jones then told y'all, sit down. Ain't nothing in the ISS for you on this rocket ship. He trying to tell y'all on this rocket ship. Boeing Starliner? Mm-mm. That's like when somebody saying something and somebody trying to throw you a little sign, they're like, mm-mm. Mm-mm. He telling you, but the size is big. I don't know how much more red the flag could have been. Now, let's move forward, okay? Shall we? I don't know how I forgot this, friends. I don't know how I forgot this part. When they found that the parachutes were having issues, I don't know if they were faulty, what was wrong with them. They also found that this particular rocket ship that they rolled up to the ISS here back in June had flammable tape. They say highly flammable, but flammable tape all over it. Why are y'all cutting corners? If you can't afford to do it, just don't do it. Lou, I'd rather lose $100 million than $1.6 billion. You get what I'm saying? You hear me out? Just stop. Get some help. How y'all done taped up the darn plane? <laughs> the rocket ship. How y'all done taped up the rocket ship? Parachute ain't working right. Software got the clock 11 hours off. Malfunctioning in orbit. Can't even dock at the ISS. Got to come back. And ain't nobody even stepped a foot up there yet. Ain't got a pinky toe up there. This is all just in the actual rocket ship, but nobody's in there. Problems after problems after problems. These people should not even have been allowed. Them, NASA should have just cut their losses and said, dang, you know, we ain't gonna go with them no more. But did they do that? No. So let's fast forward to May of 2024. Because see, they were supposed to leave back in May. In May of 2024, they were supposed to have like a flight test with a manned crew. Sonny and Butch were supposed to get on there and do their maneuvers and they parking docking and stuff back in May. But there was an issue with the valves. <sighs> Valves are important. Valves are important in your heart. They help pump the blood to the chambers. The valves are important. Valves are important on your Frigidaire. Valves are important. And I'm, I'm country. I'm saying valves, but it's valves. I'm just country. So don't, don't get down in the comments and be like, it's valves. I'm country. It is what it is. They're important. So there were issues with them. And you want me to get on them on top of all the issues they already had? But wait. There were helium leaks. In May, before they left. So now, we got to go back to the drawing board. So now at this point, I feel like the actual fixing 
of the rocket ship was just rushed. Like they just rushed and fixed it. Like who, who was in charge? Who was doing the diagrams, the Venn diagrams and the, the solutions and equations? Who was doing the math on this? I mean, are you, I don't, I don't understand. Cause if your job is to be a rocket scientist and an engineer and all of that, who is doing this for Boeing? At this point, don't shut down the outer space stuff for Boeing. Cause how, why? So all of that is all. But like clockwork, come June, they had a deadline to meet. They have a deliverable. They got to get to it. They delivered the rocket ship. Now me, Virgo astronaut, mm -mm, you had to get somebody else to do it. You had to send me to jail because I don't know what the consequences is of calling out or quitting, but today is where I stop. And they say astronauts make for like a hundred to $200,000 a year. That's not enough for me to leave the Earth's surface. Okay, not enough. I'm free falling. That is what the ISS essentially is doing. Free falling, not in outer space, in low Earth orbit. That makes sense. Those two brave astronauts got on there and they, you know, mosey on up to the space station. Now on the way to the space station, here's where it gets interesting, friends, if it wasn't already interesting enough. They have issues with the propulsion. Hmm, same issues it was having on the ground before it left the ground, okay? So they start having issues with the propulsion, and then guess what happens, friends? They have helium leaks. Helium leaks, now didn't they already have these issues? So you mean that y'all just patched them up good enough to pass an inspection, but Boeing engineers was probably sitting on the ground like, Lord, I hope they make it. Ooh, I hope they make it. And when they got in there, they started having issues. Luckily, they were able to dock on the ISS with no fatalities. So now you got to imagine the type of mental distress that would cause one person to literally have car trouble <laughs> in outer space. We get concerned enough as it is running to the gas station and we know our car getting ready to break down. It's on the last leg and you're like, well, I had to get by the store. I got to go get me some cigarillos or whatever it is you got to get. What they doing now? Backwoods? Papers? What y'all doing now? I don't know what they don't know what the young kids is doing now. But it's already hard enough that you have to do that on a car that just might not make it. And you're going on a wing and a prayer like, Lord, please get me there and back. I decided to get these two pass of hamburger meat, some spaghetti sauce, some noodles, all that. You know how it is on a car. And if your car breaks down, now you're mad because you got to pay for a tow truck. That's probably about $150, depending on how far you got to go. Okay? Okay. So now you do that in a car is stressful. Imagine running two issues in outer space where you could just possibly float off into the solar system according to science and people who believe you can leave the earth's atmosphere but whatever you're gonna hit the roof boom well now they get up there and start having issues they were able to dock and get off go inside the iss and at this point virgo astronaut sunny i know she was fuming i would have been fuming oh the look i would have looked at them people when they would have popped in on my video chat however they calling on facebook messenger or whatever i don't know what they calling them folks on but i would look at that camera like you know you done messed up right because <laughs> when i get off of here unemployed unemployable i'm go i'm trying to be on the island next to jay-z and beyonce don't call me don't ask me no math questions no engineer questions no pilot questions i don't want to hear nothing i don't want no tabloid when i get down Back on earth, my two feet get planted on solid ground because I know God will do it. Y'all better. <laughs> that would be my look. They get up there. We come to find out that allegedly the rocket ship had 10 times the amount of helium that was needed in the rocket ship. How y'all don't know that? I'm getting up in the tizzy, friend. How they don't know this? How don't they know this? And NASA. You how you just allow your people to get on this raggedy piece of crap? Cause that's what it was. And 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 wing it literally on their own, knowing that Boeing ain't meet their deadlines, knowing you had to keep funding them hundreds of millions of dollars, not twenty thousand, not a little hundred thousand, not oh we forgot a nut in the boat and that's gonna cost us two hundred thousand, hundreds of millions. In any corporation, that project would have been done. It's table. It's done. Whoever was working on it, you're done too. We're done. We don't need you. At this point, why would you? Okay. Calm down. Now, hear me out, friends. 
These people are sitting out of space and ain't got no ride home. They ride as park on the outside of the Mosey Wosey, on the outside of the room. They ride apart out there. They can't go nowhere. And they just turning and spinning, spinning and turning, rotating and revolutionizing. They just going around the earth. So now something is meant to be beautiful and you still got to work? Until you do right by me. Everything. Oh, they still had to clock in to work. Clock in to work. They still got to do their little research. Imagine. They, they, they are like, it seems like zero gravity in there. It's 90% gravity. The atrophy your muscles will experience. Not moving around and being on the gravity that's on Earth, right? Being cramped up in something that's like 300 feet long. Okay? With the same person. With different personalities of the opposite gender. Okay? Trying to share a space together. Also, while being concerned about what tomorrow brings. You worried about asteroids hitting you. I know they're seeing aliens up there, stuff flying around they can't explain. Now you kind of losing your mind and hallucinating. You ain't got nothing to do. Can't go for a walk. Ain't seen the lad. You ain't seen the bird. They ain't seen no birds. They ain't seen no cars driving down the street. The actual ISS, from what I'm understanding, is loud and noisy. They're cramped up. They're being watched 24-7. They're on camera. You got to eat your food in gulps and in, in sections. You brushing your teeth, the water and stuff floating around, and you got to go to the bathroom. And then, you know, when you get nervous, when I get nervous, my bowels move, honey. I got to go. Could you imagine trying to get in there and psh, psh, depressurize, got to wait. You know your car broke down. You know you ain't going to be able to go home. You got to wait for instructions. Your stomach hurt. You got to get out of this space suit. <sighs> Them people need a lifetime of compensation, overcompensation, okay? At no point should no rocket shuttle or ship be going into outer space where people only understand what's going on. Because I don't even understand the word understanding. Because you understand. I need to overstand what's going on. I need to know all of the plans of what's going to happen. But they spending it to us like, oh, they fine. They cool. They just up there chilling. They are not stuck. Uh, yes, they are. Yes, they are. So now they're up here. August comes. NASA and Bowen then got to uh, tussling, as I would say. Then they got into a little dispute. Then they had a tiff about bringing the astronauts back. But I want to say, it's fine. They fixed the thrusters, the propulsion system. They're online. They're functioning. And the helium is good. They have 28 helium tanks or whatever. I don't know. They were probably up there talking, sound like Mickey Mouse, and they didn't understand what was going on. Whole time, helium just leaking out. They just high as a kite. So Bowen said, they can come home. It's fine. It ain't that big of a deal, y'all. Tripping is not that big of a deal. And NASA's looking like... We really going to act like two of your airplanes didn't go down recently? We really going to act like this mission ain't behind and y'all was overfunded and late on deliverables and issues was going on with the system, the software, the, the helium. So NASA like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. No, it is a big deal. It is a big deal. You saw what happened with the, what was it, the chat? Was it the Challenger that got up there and blowed up? What was it, y'all? I can't remember, but them two, one that had a teacher and one that had like a, some animals or something. Anyway, y'all know what I'm talking about. NASA, like, we can't have that happen. Because y'all saying it's cool, but we don't think that they're going to make it back if we put them back on that Starliner, right? So, in other words, NASA made the final call to say, we're going to send the Starliner back by itself. So, if it kapowie, if it do that, it's on its own. This y'all lost. Kind of, I lost too, because this was a terrible mission. But then they said, we're going to have this other mission that was already headed there in September to go. They're going to leave two of their people behind, because they were supposed to have four. We're going to leave two of their people behind, and we're going to let Sonny and Butch ride back with them on the way home in their space shuttle in February of 2025. Hot Tomati knows. I would have cried. I would have cried and screamed on that ISS. You hear me? People would have been like, what's that noise? It sounds like something like, ee. It would have been me. We would have had to evacuate from the flooding that would have been happening from me crying and saying, I knew I should have stayed home. I'm getting upset right now just thinking about it. Oh, they're working me into a tizzy. <sighs> That's the goal, right? To get up in a tizzy, but... I was there from the beginning. I've been on 10 since the beginning of this because this is outrageous. So now these astronauts 
are scheduled to come home in February. That is an eight month trip. Now, Sunny didn't stay four days. I mean, not four days, four months at a time. She has stayed four months at a time. That's normally the maximum that they would allow an astronaut to stay up there. Okay, because you got to think about psychosis, mentally being alienated from life and people. Okay, you are literally in the most remote place human beings can be. There is a different gravity. You recycled oxygen, however you want to put it up there, you know, you're isolated. The mental state these people have got to be in is beyond me. And being up there for eight months is, is crazy to make people think that they just chilling. You get what I'm saying? And not worried about what could go wrong again. That is traumatizing. That is PTSD. You hear what I'm saying? You hear me, friend? They're probably super concerned about what other issues can be happening. Now, granted, the ISS has been continuously occupied since 2000. So somebody is always up there, but ain't nobody up there for eight months consecutively, especially when it was only supposed to be eight days. Now, if it turned into nine days, that's all it would have been for me because you got one time to make one mistake with me and you're done. You're done. One mistake, done. Not with my life, done. You're done. They just turning and spinning, turning and spinning until February. Now, I don't know what the new astronauts have got there yet, but they're scheduled to be there this month. And they'll have some more people to talk to. But sometimes people be there may not speak the same language as them. Um, it may be from another country. And that's another thing, too. How y'all can't get along in the real world, but have other countries up there in the astronaut, in the ISS place that get along just fine? I don't know. Because that's why I be trying to figure out what they hiding. Because y'all get along for Antarctica. Y'all get along for the ISS, the International Space Station. But y'all can't get along with your two feet planted on solid ground. Update. Boeing lost the contract to decommission the space station. So in 2031, that space station is supposed to be decommissioned, meaning that they're literally going to crash it into the earth. They're going to crash it into the earth's atmosphere, let it burn up, right? Guess who did get the contract? You got it, friend. Ilolo. SpaceX got that contract for like $800 million. So Boeing is probably sitting there thinking, we could tear everything else up, but we lost the contract for somebody to pay us to tear it up. That's got to be depressing. That's got to be depressing, friend, to be... You're Boeing. You're Boeing. That's crazy to me, these people up here. I don't know, friends. I don't know. So that's the update on the ISS. Y'all go ahead and tell me what y'all think about that, because for me, it is mind-blowing, boggling, and discombobulating, and just crazy that these people are still up there. They should have been in the first place. You understand what I'm saying? Do y'all hear me what I say? They should not been up there in the first place. Not on that one. Not on the Starliner because Starliner wasn't ready. It wasn't ready, friends. And this just goes to show you what folks would do for money. And you have to remain ethical when making money. Because this is what unethical and rushed practices and broken policies and stuff look like. When you have something like this going up into low Earth orbit, meaning just right above where the airplanes fly, okay? When I say just right above, I ain't talking about like two or three feet. I'm talking about a few thousands and thousands. But still, you got to be, everything got to be right. We can't, we can't cut corners. We can't be using flammable tape and, and um, uh, too much helium. At one point, we had a helium shortage. Is this why? Y'all remember we had a helium shortage? You couldn't go to Dollar Tree and get no balloons. They had no helium. You had to have balloons that didn't float. Everybody can kick around on the floor at the party. Y'all don't remember that, but I remember that a few years ago. Um, but anyway, friends, please let me know what y'all think about this video. Please give me your comment on what you think is going on up there and what you really feel like the whole thing is. I heard some people talk about something like contagion. But I don't think they'll be sending nobody else up there if it was a contagion going on, unless it was like nurse astronauts or doctor astronauts. Do these people have to be trained in um, medicine? as well when they go up there because oh my goodness what if somebody had got sick and had like a stroke or heart attack or something they can't get back down <sighs> that's why i could be up there that's why friends that's <laughs> i think about the unthinkable okay i'm going to analyze everything we need a hospital wing on the iss if i'm going because if i get sick somebody got to be able to resuscitate me okay they can't have no drink i want to got any beers up there no and I know they stress too. I'm like, you're going to have to send something. Antidepressant, anti-anxiety, drink. 
a cigarette, a cigarillo, a backwood, something. I don't know, friends. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That really costs you nothing, friends. If you would do me that one favor, I'd really appreciate that. And share the video. Anyway, until next time, I really hope I ain't get y'all up in too much of a tizzy. And I'm going to call you back later on, friends.